Good morning, good morning, good morning. In this video, I want to introduce you guys to the DUNS number. What is the DUNS number? How you can benefit from having a DUNS number? Uh, how you can get a DUNS number pretty fast in two days or less? And, you know, who can benefit from having a DUNS number? Because a lot of this, there's a lot of people out there not sure. They're kind of questioning, well, you know, I, I work with Uber. Should I get a DUNS number? I mean, you can if you would like. And this video might jump into some of the reasons why you should consider getting one and again how you can get one so a duns number a duns number is a unique nine digit identifier for a business created by credit borough dun and bradstreet dun and bradstreet is one of the three major business credit boroughs duns numbers have become the standard numbering system to identify businesses across the globe the Data Universal Numbering System, or DUNS number, was created and copyrighted in 1962 by Dunn and Bradstreet. So just as your social security number reveals a lot about you, your bank account, your tax returns, credit score, residences, etc., your DUNS number reveals similar information, but about your business. So how can a DUNS number help me? Like I said, there are four different ways a DUNS number can help you. Number one is that you can establish business credit worthiness. Your DUNS is directly tied to the credit profile DNB builds on your business. In fact, to even have a DNB Paydex score, you can check yours with NAV, you'll need a DUNS number. When vendors or suppliers look up your business credit profile because they are considering doing business with you and offering your business trade credit or a lender who is considering lending to your business, they'll want to see a credit history. Keep in mind that your credit profile won't be much use to you and can actually harm you until you begin establishing a strong business credit history. And I will have a video on how you can sign up with NAV and, uh, you know, benefit from NAV as well, similar to what they just said, how you can check your score, but there are other benefits to using NAV. So I will be making a video on that very shortly as well. Number two. Safeguard your personal credit worthiness. When you don't have a DUNS number tied to your business credit profile, you'll need to depend more on your personal credit for business purposes. This can harm your personal credit if you make late payments or keep high amounts of business debt. Remember, we don't want our personal credit usage to be high. You want to keep it low. I mean, it's similar to credit cards where the ideal position is to keep it below 25, below 30% of your usage. And I'm, I have a good feeling you might want to consider doing the same thing with, you know, your, your credit, which is why having business credit will help you because you can kind of spread it and it doesn't all have to just go towards your personal uh, credit. Number three, bid on government contracts, local state and federal contracting opportunities will likely require your business to have a DUNS number. Any contracting opportunity in the System for Award Management, SAM, will require a DUNS number to apply. And this is why we're going to go over the uh, that SAM kind of the government uh, application version, which will allow you to get your DUNS number quickly and position you where if you wanted to potentially apply for some sort of federal contract, some government contract, you will be able to because you're going to have your DUNS number. Number four is get longer terms with your suppliers. If you can prove to vendors and suppliers that you are a credit worthy business, yes, you are a credit worthy business. So if you are self-employed or if you are an actual LLC or an S corp or whatever, you want to prove to these people that, you know, you're worthy of their credit. Well, they will be more likely to offer you longer trade terms like net 30, net 60, or even net 90 day terms. The best way to do this is by establishing business credit history tied to your DUNS number. So as I mentioned, you know, the DUNS number, it's, it's basically that way to help with identifying your business. You know, some people might question, well, is a DUNS number the same as a federal tax ID number? A DUNS number is different from your federal tax ID number, your EIN. A DUNS number is used for business credit reporting purposes, whereas a EIN is used by the IRS and used for tax identification purposes. And so, like I said, many of you guys are probably like you, you've heard it. You've, you've you've started to see this term thrown around quite a bit over the over this year. And, you know, especially with a lot of these 
uh, these grants and loan programs being rolled out, um, you know, people are making more of an effort to get a DUNS number now, especially uh, self-employed individuals. And so the next question might be, well, how do I apply for a DUNS number? It's pretty simple. It's pretty easy. I will include a link not only to that article that we just covered, um, but I'll also include a link to this page right here, which again is going to um, hopefully allow you to get your DUNS number much, much faster than it would if you use their traditional uh, website link, which, you know, you can pretty much go to Google, type it in, and you will, it will be like the first thing that pops up here. But I'm using that second link, as I mentioned, which is the one that will allow you to get your DUNS number faster. So it says Dun & Bradstreet provides DUNS number, a unique nine digit identification number for each physical location of your business. Dun's number assignment is free for all businesses required to register with the U.S. federal government for contracts or grants. Click here to request your Dun's number via the web. So we're going to click that link and now it redirects us here. And now we are going to select our country, which is the United States of America. I'm going to press OK. Be redirected. And now you just fill this out with your business information. Excuse me. Um, if you are self-employed again, you're going to put your information here. So you would not put Uber or Lyft or DoorDash if you work with Uber, Lyft or DoorDash. You just work with them. You don't actually work for them. You are your own business, my friends. Too many people out there have missed out on so many programs and benefits because they haven't been looking at themselves as a business. You know, if you're self-employed, yes, you haven't registered as an LLC, but you know, you're essentially no different than someone who has, you know, they've just taken that one initial, that one additional step um, to solidify things. I guess you can say certify things. Um, you know, I have an LLC, but I also have my sole proprietorship business in which um, I technically had that for longer than my actual LLC and um, was still able to, you know, generate money, still able to make a living off of it, still able to leave, you know, corporate sales and, and, and do my own thing. Um, without it actually having a DUNS number. But as a result of that, while I was building it up, I wasn't uh, positioned to, again, benefit from 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 uh, some of these uh, programs or being able to build up my company credit, so to speak, my business credit, uh, because I didn't have a DUNS number. So there wasn't, you know, any of the, the credit worthy, uh, I guess, attributes, so to speak, that I would want to show weren't being recorded. And you know, if I wanted to go and then apply for a loan somewhere else, they're going to say, let's, you know, we want to look up your record, your, your, uh, your DUNS number and see how things go and make sure you are worthy of our money that you can pay us back. Well, I, I wouldn't have had as much under there to show for, you know, what I, you know, kind of prove my stance to show that I can pay these lenders back if they lent me money. So for this portion of the application, you essentially will add your business name not who you work with. So if you are part of the gig economy, for example, and you work with Uber, you will not write Uber here. You will write your personal name if you don't actually have an, a registered business. So if your name is Johnny Mac, you're going to write Johnny Mac. If your business is Bob's Pizza, you're going to write Bob's Pizza. So again, if you're sole proprietor, self-employed, uh, freelancer, independent contractor, you will use your personal name in this section um, or your company's registered name. So I'm going to fill this out and then we'll press next. So now that we filled out this section with all of our business information or our personal information, and if you, you know, again, don't have a business address, then you're going to use your personal address. If you don't have an actual registered business, then you'll use your personal name. After you do this, you're going to press submit. Now you're going to see a bunch of businesses that are currently already um, essentially registered with uh, DMB. On the website, you're going to say you're going to confirm none of these are yours. And then you do request a new DUNS number down here on the bottom left. All of a sudden we get taken to this page, which I think this is the initial original page that you would see if you went directly to their website. Um, but again, we want to get it as soon as possible. So just going through that form I showed you will allow you to get it quicker. Um, and so when you do go to complete this, as you can see, to request a new DUNS number or modify an existing DUNS number, you will need two forms of acceptable documentation to complete this process. See examples of acceptable forms down below. And essentially, 
again, you just need to help prove that your business is legit. So, you know, you're going to probably include your EIN number confirmation letter that you received from the IRS, which I do have a video on how you can get your EIN uh, if you haven't received that yet. Um, aside from this, maybe you would do a, um, you know, you can send a DBA assigned name certificate filing. So if you are self-employed um, and you have a DBA, you might send that, which, for example, I have Adam Helper as a DBA with the city of Boston. I'm registered with the city of Boston. But again, it's not an actual LLC, so it's not registered on a federal level. Um, that's where a DBA form might come into the picture. Uh, you know, Secretary of State Articles of Incorporation are forms that you would use if you had registered your, your business as an LLC or S Corp or whatever. Um, so you'll have that form to send them. Uh, you know, and of course, then there's utility bills or lease agreements. So if you have a, a business office, that's when you're going to use your utility bill or lease agreement. Otherwise, you're going to use, you know, again, your home personal address because you, you're probably self-employed. You probably work from home, um, which is fine as well, of course. So you're going to get those documents ready and prepared um, really quickly up here. It says both documents must clearly show current correct legal business name at the current physical address. These documents will be uploaded electronically in step two. And for sole proprietorships, make sure documentation contains your personal legal name in current physical address, personal mailboxes, PM, uh, PMB, third party mail sites, virtual offices, APO, FPO addresses will not be accepted. So this is one of those funky things. Um, because I, I, I know a lot of businesses, a lot of people use virtual offices. Um, so you might get some resistance here. Um, you might not. Again, if you are a registered business versus being a sole proprietor, it doesn't really matter. They just want to make sure your information is accurate and uh, correct and aligned. And you want it to be the same across the board when you apply for, you know, program, uh, you know, credit programs or whatever with vendors and this, that and the other. Um, your information needs to be consistent. That's kind of what what you want to do. You just want to make sure the address you have on file is the same across the board and you're not using different addresses all over the place. So we're just going to press continue. And once you get to this page, it's saying, uh, please select your choice below DMB Government Customer Response Center. So which one of these um, makes most sense for you? Well, you're going to do the federal government contractors in uh, grantees duns number support now it's saying please select the choice below create a new duns number and that's the top thing for uh please select the country or territory where your company is physically located for entities within the united states and as i mentioned now we're going to be brought to this page where you want to just have those documents on file you should already have these in like a, a folder somewhere. This is just something that, you know, even if you don't yet do it right now, make a folder that specifically will have some of these documents um, held there so that when it's time to do things like this, when it's time to apply for grants and some of these loans, the PPP IDL, you're going to have these documents already organized and waiting for you. Just do it now. Do it once. Get it done with. And that will help you with being able to move forward when you are ready to jump into the application for a lot of these programs. So as I mentioned, you're gonna have these two documents um, on hand and you're gonna upload these. Then you'll just do proceed. If my image wasn't there. You're gonna add your email address. Um, I don't know, I don't, I don't believe they send you a confirmation thing. So test email. Um, we're going to press next. We located your contact information in our records. Okay, interesting. And you're just going to add in all of your information, your company name. Again, if you are self-employed, you're going to add your personal name here. If you have a, a trade name, if you're doing business as another name. So like I said, my name's Adam, but my trade name, my self-employed business is Adam Helper. So I would write Adam Spencer here. And then for my DBA, I would write Adam Helper. Um, or if you have an actual registered LLC, you're going to write your actual LLC name right here. Then you'll fill in your company uh, phone number. You'll add your business physical address. You're going to add your floor. You can add your business city. 
your business state, your postal code, and then this should be the United States. After that, you're going to add your business structure. So again, are you an LLC or are you a sole proprietorship? Do you have a partnership, limited partnership, whichever it might be? You know, let's just say LLC. Then you're going to add your CEO name. So it's probably you. It's probably your personal name here. Um, again, if you are doing the sole proprietorship, same difference. You are the CEO. You are the boss. You are the owner. Um, you're going to add, you know, uh, owner here or boss, whatever. I think there should be an owner. Yep. Owner. You add your company website, home base business. Be in again, be transparent. So, you know, if you don't have an actual uh, business address, then just write yes. If you do, then say no. Number of employees. And it, again, if you are self employed or sole proprietorship, you are not only the owner, but you are the employee. You're the worker. So you would write one. You include yourself. So most likely one, maybe two, maybe, you know, I can't imagine many of you guys watching this have a ton of employees, but if you do include your employees and then also include yourself when you write the number here and then date business started, you just, you know, approximately when your business was started. And then this is, as it says, this is an optional section. And, um, you know, I think I'll do a video on, you know, your NACs and your SIC, but essentially these are just kind of short little uh, codes that help to identify the industry of your business. So for me, um, you know, like uh, marketing, consulting um, is essentially the, the, the industry that I use pretty much. And um, like I said, I'll make a separate video on that um, where you guys can figure out how to find your uh, NACs code. Um, but this is optional, so it's not mandatory. You can leave it blank. And then you'll just do next. I don't know if it's going to work because I didn't like fill anything out. <laughs> yeah. So essentially, once you do this, you're good to go. You're done. Um, you know, like I said, you want to supply those two documents. But aside from that, um, you know, you're, you're pretty much all set. I might have another video that I've already recorded on one of my channels that shows this. And maybe I'll, I'll edit I'll splice it into that so you guys can see what I'm talking about. But it's a really easy process. For some reason, people are intimidated. People think it's harder than it is. But um, yeah, I just showed you guys how easy it is to get your DUNS number fast. And, you know, how you can get a DUNS number if you are a actual business or self-employed, an independent contractor, a sole proprietor. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. If so, definitely like this video and subscribe to the new channel. Again, as we build up this channel and get the ball rolling, uh, I do want to kind of get some momentum going, get some excitement with you guys. So what I'm doing is a little, little freebie, a little thank you, a little, you know, give and get uh, gratitude um, contest, I guess you can say raffle. I don't know. Um, essentially, I want to do a little giveaway. So the first i think right now i'm at 25 um pretty much but i'll throw it out there right now um the first 25 people to subscribe to this channel will be entered into a little contest get some free money i will help uh you know you out by sending you a little money on cash app the first 25 people to subscribe to this channel will have a chance to get some free money and i think i might do something like this moving forward so essentially, all you got to do is hit that subscribe button and you are positioned to kind of, you know, get some free money every month or every other month or however frequently I'm able to hit these new kind of goals or marks um, with building up this channel. But all you do is subscribe once and you kind of entered into that pool forever. So I definitely wanted to finish this video with that. A nice little surprise, a nice little treat to show my appreciation to all of you who watched this video all the way through because I know how easy it is to jump ship and get distracted and want to go focus on something else that's more exciting or entertaining and you know not as important you know but we got to do these things these are part of the the required steps the necessary steps if you want to get to that next level if you want to continue to move forward towards financial freedom in your financial independence journey and i'm hoping this video and other videos will help you guys so on that note, like I said, if you haven't yet liked this video, subscribe to the channel. Much appreciation for watching. And uh, you already know, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.